Hello, Sunday School. Good to see you this week. Today we're talking about the 12 spies, which is an exciting, fun lesson. Um, let's talk about our key points right up at the top of the lesson so you can keep them in mind as we go through it. Some of the key points here, we can trust God. This is a scary world, isn't it? Sometimes we look at this world and we're afraid of what might happen to us. We're scared about the future. We're anxious about a situation at school or at home or other places. This lesson reminds us we can trust God. And we actually learned from a bad example here of uh, some of these spies not trusting in God. So we can trust God. And we should say too, sometimes we don't trust in God. Sometimes we really struggle to trust that he's good and loving and powerful, and that we, we don't have to be afraid. And when we do that, how does God respond? He loves and forgives us. So keep, so keep those things in mind. God, tr We can trust God, don't have to be afraid, and God forgives us. So the 12 spies is our lesson. What is a spy? What does a spy do? If you're watching with uh, an adult, this is a place where you could stop, pause the video, talk about as a group, what is a spy? What do they do? And I'm gonna tell you what a spy is. Uh, a spy is someone who sneaks into an area, might be another part of the city, uh, might be another country, they sneak into an area, maybe they'll wear a disguise, maybe like funny glasses, fake mustache or something like that. But they sneak into an area so that they can get more information that they need to know. Um, they might be trying to figure out what their enemies are doing. Do, are the enemies planning to attack us? If they are, it'd be good to know about that so we can make our own plans to defend ourselves. Someone who does a lot of spying is Batman. Here's a Lego Batman. Maybe you remember that from the Batman movie or from cartoons. Uh, but sometimes Lego Batman will be kind of looking for the Joker, looking for the Riddler, looking for Penguin, and he'll sneak up to their hideout and you know maybe use his like bat grappling hook and you know kind of hang in the air and listen to what is Joker saying? What is he going to do to Gotham City? So he's spying on them so he can find out exactly what his plans need to be in order to save the people of Gotham, Gotham City. The Israelites have spies in our lesson today. So the Israelites had been freed from slavery in Egypt. God had done these amazing miracles um, in uh, releasing them from Egypt and the 10 plagues. God had parted the Red Sea so they could cross. God put food on the ground for them, manna and quail. Just awesome. He'd been with them the whole time. Now they're, the journey's almost over. They're right at the edge of the promised land where you know God is, has told them they're going to go. So they should just know that God is... He's going to keep his promise, you know, but yet they're kind of struggling with doubts. They think to themselves, we were just a, a nation in slavery. How can we possibly go into this big new land and take this land over for ourselves? So they ask God, is it okay if we send in spies who can kind of give us an idea about the land ahead of time? And God is very nice. So God says, yeah, you can send in spies. So Moses picks 10 spies. One from each, or 12 spies, I should say. One from each tribe of Israel. So 12 guys are going to go in. Moses tells them, I want you to go into this land and find out things like, what are the people like there? Are they really big and strong? Do they have good forts? Do they have good weapons? Uh, how about the land? Is it good for growing food? Because they really needed to do that. They were going to grow their own food. So tell us what it's like. I don't know if these names on the map mean anything to you, but it just shows you they went through the whole land. So they started at the bottom of Kadesh Barnea. And just sort of work their way up through the land, gathering information about what's going on. One of the things they bring back is grapes. What do you think of when you think of grapes? How, how big of like a bundle of grapes do you think of? I think of like something from the grocery store, like a pound of grapes or something like that. Sometimes they're in a bag, sometimes they're in like a plastic container like this. What's pretty cool is that the spies bring back this giant cluster of grapes. And it takes two dudes to carry it. They put it on a pole between them. Oh, these grapes are heavy. So they come back to the people and say, as far as the land goes, oh, it's great. I mean, this is like one big jungle gym. There's awesome food everywhere. It's fantastic. So the report starts out pretty good. As far as the land guys go, land goes, guys, A plus. This is a great land. But the people there. Moses had said, what are the people like? And 10 of the spies came back and said, the people there. It's crazy. The people there are so big. Compared to them, you know, we're, we're sneaking around. Compared to them, we looked like grasshoppers. Here's a grasshopper in, in someone's hand. Grasshoppers are tiny. So how big did they say the other people were there, the Canaanites? They said, they're so giant. 
we looked like grasshoppers. In fact, they say they kind of looked like David looked like with compared to Goliath. You know, these people are giants. We're just so small. There's no way we can do this. There's no way. Yeah, this land is full of giant grapes and awesome food. But there's no way we can do it. Well, one of the spies, a guy named Caleb, tries to give them sort of this stirring speech, you know, like a coach will at halftime of a game if you're down. And kind of says, no, we can do this. Don't, don't give up hope. We can definitely do this. Caleb says, yeah, maybe these people are bigger than normal, but it doesn't matter because God is on our side. If God's on our side, it doesn't matter how big these guys are. They could be 90 feet tall. If God says he wants us to win, then we're going to win. The people don't really like this. They don't like that Caleb said this. So uh, in chapter 14, you have sort of this angry mob that forms and they're so mad at Moses and they're mad at Joshua and mad at Caleb. Joshua and Caleb are the two spies who said, we can do this. And basically they go to Moses and they complain and like, why did you even bring us out of Egypt? We were so happy there. This is stupid. We're going to die out here. These giant people are going to kill us if we try to attack. Which is kind of crazy that they said that, right? Because life was miserable in Egypt. Um, it just had not been fun. So for them to now say, oh man, we wish we were back in Egypt, that's that's foolish. Uh, that's, that's not what they should be thinking at all. But they're angry. And this is sort of how the Israelites are a bunch of times in the Old Testament. They, they just, they're not very thankful for what God has done. And they struggle with trusting in him. So Moses and Joshua and Caleb, they fall, they do a funny thing. They kind of fall face down before the people try to get their attention and to be humble and say, look, we know that this is scary, but you just have to trust that God knows what he's doing. God is so big and powerful and he loves us. If he says we can win, we can win. But the people still didn't believe. They still were really super afraid. So then you know what happens? God comes down in glory. Uh, it's, it says his, his glory uh, comes to the, the tent of meeting, basically comes to their church. And God talks with Moses and says, do these people forget? Do they forget all the awesome stuff that I did for them? Did they forget the parting of the Red Sea? Did they forget the plagues? Did they forget that I put food on the ground for them? That I brought water out of a rock? And, and God says, boy, maybe these people shouldn't get the promised land. Maybe instead they should just not be a people anymore. And he and Moses talk. And God finally says, you know what? I'm a loving God and I will forgive them even though they struggle with trust in me now and they'll struggle with trusting me later. In fact, the vicar's preaching on um, Numbers 21 another time when the Israelites trust, uh, failed to trust God. That's the sermon text for this weekend. He says, I forgive them even though they don't deserve my forgiveness. But here's the thing, they will receive a consequence. He says, they're not going to go to the promised land right now. Instead, they're going to wander around the, the desert for 40 years. You've got a map here. I'll make the map bigger here for you for a second. You can see the, the on the left side of the screen there where it says Ramses. That's where they started. Uh, that's when they had left Egypt. And they're just sort of wandering around. And see all those like squigglies? Kind of the center where it says Wilderness of Zin? Yeah, they're going to spend 40 years just kind of going around the same place. 40 years. That's a long time. I'm 36 years old. So four years longer than I've been alive, that's how long they're going to wander in the wilderness. Which means most of the people that left Egypt are not going to be alive to go into the promised land 40 years later. That's part of the consequences of their sin. They won't be able to go in. But God will keep his promise, even though they don't deserve it. One day, you can see, they'll cross the Dead Sea, cross the Dead sea there, cross the, the Jordan River, and they will enter the promised land. But there will be a consequence. Um, the last part of the lesson is sort of a sad part. So once God says all this, the people feel really bad. And they say, we should have trusted you. You know what? We'll go and take it now. We'll, we'll, we're willing to go now and, and fight. You know, we should have trusted you all along. And Moses says, don't do that. God's not going to go with you. You know, you have this consequence now. Don't try to attack. And the people say, no, 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 we'll attack. And they go and attack and it doesn't go well. They just get defeated. So they sort of half learn their lesson where they realize they should trust God, but they don't listen to him. They don't listen to the consequences and they end up losing big time in battle. Let's go over the main points of the lesson again. So we said one of them is trust in God. Here's uh, verse, verses from Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and you will make your path straight. What the Israelites were doing and those 10 spies were doing was saying, we don't think we can beat these people. Our brains tell us they're too big and we're too small. How's a grasshopper supposed to defeat a giant? So they weren't trusting in God with their heart. They were trusting in their heads. 
and, and their brain's telling them you can't do it. And Moses and jo Joshua and Caleb were saying, don't trust your mind, trust God's promises. That's good for us to remember too, because sometimes our mind says, boy, you know, if, if someone you love gets sick, that's just the worst and nothing good can happen. Or if we're fighting with our friends a little bit, our brain says, no one will ever really like you anymore. Uh, our brain says, if you don't have enough money, life is going to be really, really difficult. Um, the biggest thing our brains say is, man, death is really scary. God says, no, if I'm on your side, there's nothing, there's nothing that uh, should cause you to be afraid. Not even death itself, because Jesus died and rose again. Uh, he took our place, so there's a place in heaven waiting for us. Not even death is scary uh, if you trust in God with all your heart. Another point we should make, sometimes there are consequences. Does this picture look familiar to you? Have you ever been sent to sit in the corner? I did. I was sent to sit in the corner when I was little for doing something wrong. You know, is it possible that you get in trouble and your parents, your grandparents, the teacher or babysitter forgive you, but you still get a consequence? It is. That's an important part of growing up. Sometimes we do something wrong. We say we're sorry and we mean it. Uh, it's We're told that we're forgiven, but still there's a punishment or a consequence for what we've done. And that's what the Israelites got. They got God's forgiveness, but also God said, you're going to wander in the desert for 40, 40 years, not because I hate you, but because I love you. You need to learn a, a valuable lesson, and many of them did. Final major point of this lesson is God loves us. Man, you think of all the different things God had done for those people of Israel, uh, all the powerful miracles they had seen, all the love he had shown them, and for them to still doubt him, that must have been so frustrating. But God's love wins the day. And that's true for us too. We do frustrating things to God all the time. We don't trust. We don't do what's right. And yet God says, I love you. I send Jesus to die for you. So if that's the kind of God that we have, if he's on our team, if he's our coach and the player and wins the game for us completely, should we be feeling pretty good? Yeah, we can trust in him and feel good and not be afraid. Let's pray about that. Lord God, thank you for lessons like this that show us how powerful you are and show us how important it is to trust in you. Forgive us for the times when we struggle to show that trust and get really anxious or afraid. Show us that you are uh, a loving God, a God of power, who will work all things for our good. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We will see you next week.